the story of the game is the dragons were introducing the dragon kingdom their world when one of the dragons actually brought up the ma the main antagonist Ganassi Gnork about his magical staff that he carries that can turn anyone into stone one of the dragons brought said Ganassi is not threatening he's not scary he's ugly and then Ganassi heard them he turns all of them into stone except for one dragon a purple dragon named Spyro he sets out on a mission to rescue the dragons from Ganassi spell Spyro later defeated Ganassi Gnork rescues all the dragons restore peace and balance to the dragon kingdom the end The gameplay is a open world similar to Super Mario 64. You're standing in an open world where you can explore, beat enemies, and collect the treasure, etc. Spyro has a health bar. Sparks the Dragonfly is the health bar monitor for Spyro. Sparks pr protects Spyro. If Sparks takes damage, he changes colors, blue to green. When if, an, if Sparks get, gets another hit, then he'll disappear, the, leaving Spyro vulnerable to hits. Sparks can return if you kill sheep or small animals. The butterflies will appear. Sparks will regain his health bar after eating all the butterflies back to normal. There are two gameplay styles. One of them is a flying challenge. The flying challenges are basically the bonus levels. Like here's what you have to do in there. You basically have to destroy all the Gnorks and find all the treasure and fly through those rings. And after you do all that, you receive the treasure. But there's a time limit on there. If you stay in there too long, then you won't be able to, to get the treasure. If you hit or you drown, you'll the bonus level is up. So you'll have to try again. But if you manage to get all of them in time, you receive the treasure. All right. Now back to the hub hub world gameplay. There there is no time limit in the hub world. So you can stay stay in there as long as you want. There there are these, you know, portals and the main worlds that you stand in that will take you to these other worlds. Spar 1 has a lot of memorable levels like Stone Hills, Dark Passage, Dark Hollows, Wizard Peaks, and Toasty, etc. You name it. <laughs> collectibles are the dragon statues the others collectibles are the side items such as dragon eggs and gemstones and the keys the dragons can be rescued by touching the statues the dragons will offer some dialogue some will help you some will re repeat the same lines the dragon eggs can be collected by defeating the dragon thieves. The, the dragon thieves are very fast and so you'll have to charge after them just to acquire the dragon egg. The gemstones can be collected by hitting the treasure chests and grabbing them on the ground. If you, The enemies might as well have one of them. Killing the enemies they will drop the treasure. One more item that I almost forgot to mention is the golden keys. The golden keys can be collected if you find one of them throughout the level. Once you found one of them, it will take you'll have to find the metal treasure chests. They can be found in the 
in some of the levels depending on which level you're in another item is the extra life these can be acquired by destroying the extra life boxes you'll gain an extra life every time you get one <laughs> Spar has multiple abilities. He he can breathe fire just to burn his enemies into a barbecue. He can fly across platforms and bombless pits. He can charge enemies, do a roll, do a supercharge. Later on, that's in the magic crafts. He also has a flame breath upgrade. But that's later on in the haunted castle spoiler spoiler alert when you're using the fire breath and the charging sometimes it won't work on big enemies sometimes they won't work on small enemies some some will work on the, the fire breath will work on the big enemies and sometimes the fire breath works on the small enemies as well but sometimes the charging won't always work on the big enemies as well it will work on the small enemies sometimes depending on which enemy you face after you have collected all the dragon statues and the gemstones you can go to the blueness and then he'll tell you would you like to go to the next world so you can travel to other worlds after you have completely finish the the current world that you're at so each time you have collected so much items you're you're free to he head on to the next world so you can do some more rest do some more collecting such as dragons or dragon eggs etc you can go to any world you you would like to go it's your option there are several worlds in this game so I'll just give you guys, I'll just spoil it for you. You have the artisan world, you have peacekeepers and magic crafts, beast makers, dream, dream weavers, and Ganassi's world. There you have it. music in the game is my jam I just don't know where to begin the music just screams all nostal all nostalgia because like when I listen to the music I just you know had a had a little epic sen sensation here listen
boss fights for the other part are just simply too easy. There's really not much for me to say about these boss battles. They're all just, you know, too easy. The first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth, the fourth one, all of them, they're just, you know, too easy. They don't really offer any challenges whatsoever. Like, these bosses are just easy. Spiral the Dragon is an easy game on the PlayStation 1. Before anyone answer a question, does the Spiral the Dragon holds up? Isn't it obvious? Yeah. I give Spiral 1 8 out of 10. It, the reason? Super easy. The open world is good. Music kicks ass. That's pretty much what this whole review says in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next game review. This is the Clo Figure signing out for now. Peace.